Hey YouTube, I'm Mr. Terry, a high school history teacher, and welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. All right, we're headed back to a channel favorite, and that is the Salmonella Academy. And today's video that we're gonna be checking out is the Great Emu War. Okay, before I get crucified by the Australians uh, in the comment section, I'll make sure to do it again. The Great Emu War. All right, we'll check this out in just a second. Now, make sure that you support the original video. Original video link will be down below. Make sure you support Sam. Give the video a like, thumbs up, even if you've seen it before. If you like my channel, I'd love if you hit that sub button, enable those notifications, because I do a lot of premieres, a lot of live streams, and that kind of stuff. Real quick, though, before we get started, I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, and that is Audible. Now, there's a good chance you've heard of Audible, but in case you haven't or you need to be reminded, Audible is the leading provider of audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. Their content ranges from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, languages, business, motivation, and more. Now, Audible members are getting even more with the all-new Plus catalog. The Plus catalog has thousands of select audiobooks, podcasts, Audible originals, guided fitness and meditation programs, sleep tracks for better rest, and more, all included with the membership. Audible members are going to get one free credit a month that they can use on any title in the premium catalog. Bestsellers, new releases... Doesn't matter the price, you're gonna be able to keep it forever. With an Audible membership, you're gonna be able to download titles and be able to listen to them offline anytime and anywhere. The Audible app is free on your smartphone or in your tablet, and you can listen across the devices without losing your spot. Audible members don't have to worry about using their credits right away either. You can keep your credits for up to a year and use them to binge a whole series if you want. And if you're not loving your selection, you can always swap it out for another. And if you're looking for something to listen to, you might want to check out the book that I'm currently reading, and that is Dan Brown's Inferno. Now, I love Dan Brown's books. You've probably heard of The Da Vinci Code, maybe Angels and Demons. And this book, the main character is opposite, a guy that is obsessed with Dante's Inferno. So there's a lot of historical inferences uh, into this, and it's been great so far. So if you're looking for something to check out, give that one a try. All right, so visit audible.com slash Mr. Terry or text Mr. Terry to 500-500 to start your free 30-day trial right now. Say it. Say hi, kids. Or hey, kids. Say it. Hey, kids. Yeah. Today I'm going to yes. talk about the Great Emu War. So here's what happened, right? Our story began. Sam. Emu. I don't even want to look at your comment section to see how many uptight people corrected you. In Australia, home of the upside down whopper. The year is 1932. I mean, everything's but upside down. You guys know that, right? Australia is literally upside down. Everything they do is upside upside down. I can't believe they figured out how to operate a society upside down of everybody. I mean, I props to props props to you guys, Australia. I don't know how you do it, but good work. All right, 1932. A very large chunk of the country's population lives on homesteads, just putting seeds in the ground and waiting for food to show up. You know, but their lives are hard. That's Firstly, Australian is, right? soil kind of blows. It's pretty terrible for farming. Like on a scale from Margaret Thatcher's corpse to Octomom, Australia's soil is a solid Hillary Clinton infertility. Okay. Secondly, the whole okay, Great perfect. Depression thing is so, going on, yeah. which automatically okay, makes wait, everything... perfect there. We got Octomom, but eight children. All right, Margaret Thatcher's corpse right there at Hillary Clinton. Okay, soil, okay, very clear, very clear. Better than any kind of, you know, uh, moisture scale or, or how much uh, uh, nitrogen is in the soil. This this is much better. Hillary Clinton infertility. Secondly, the whole Great Depression thing's going on, which automatically makes everything suck worse. Wait, 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 wait. Breaking news. Welsh turned to eating zero sheep... Also, the economy's bad. And third, and possibly most important, is the emu infestation. These gangly dill holes were all over the place, <laughs> just walking on crops and crapping on crops and crapping on walks and cropping on craps and crabbing <laughs> on docks and captain on the rocks. You get the idea. So th now, aren't they? Aren't emus? They're they're, they're they're kind of a pest, right? In in Australia, they're kind of like pests. They're I don't know if they're really liked or embraced. Isn't that true? 
The government evaluated the situation. They were like, well, let's see. Let's weigh our options here. As a government, we could start spending even more money to secure the welfare of our citizens through this socioeconomic crisis, money that we barely even have. Or, alternatively, we could just start fucking slaughtering emus, so at least it looks like we're helping. So that Okay, okay. Now, it said 1932, right? So we're talking uh, Great Depression is really starting to kick in. Great Depression, in, in, in a lot of ways, kind of gets amplified and really starts in a way in uh, October 1929 the stock market crash and I mean the effects weren't felt necessarily instantly at least by normal people for stockbrokers and stuff stuff it was but I know about yeah 1932 it kind of reached its peak I believe globally at least uh, at least in the United States I know it's going to extend globally um, at its height around 1932 with the highest rates of unemployment and things like that so there is context here um, we'll see how getting machine guns and and uh, slaughtering a bunch of uh, flightless birds will fix that. Well, that's what they did. Major G.P.W. Meredith of the Australian military GPW? was put in command of the operation, and he had a total of two soldiers at his disposal, each of which had a light machine gun. Additionally, the pair was given a total of 10,000 rounds of ammunition to be spent on taking wow. out emus. So on paper, that sounds like a piece of cake. They're basically just big turkeys on stilts, so sure. how hard could it be? Well, apparently, Literally. pretty freaking hard. Let me learn you kids a thing or two about emus. First of all, emus are tough as hell. Their bodies <laughs> are basically like meat-laden tanks. They can definitely take a bullet or three and still keep running long enough to get away. Kay. Secondly, these fuckers have tactics. Like, guerrilla warfare, it ain't got shit on emu warfare. They start <laughs> out in a big herd or flock or pod, I don't really know. Let me Google it. Okay, a group of emus is technically called a mob. So you got a big mob of emus, right? And okay, yeah, that that's awesome. That, that, um, that sounds like even cooler like isn't a group of crows like a murder a murder of crows like there's some weird units of measurements out there is they sense danger they break up into a bunch of little mobs and start scattering in every direction so if you're spraying them down with a machine gun you can't just whip it around all over the place you have to focus your fire on one group at a time meaning most of the others could get away pretty easily i don't know if they had like a huddle beforehand or if this is just some coincidental product from their ridiculous I, bird mind i'd like to think they had a huddle i think they had a huddle but it was effective either way. So between these two things, taking out the emus ended up being a huge struggle. Here's the story on what happened. So the crew went out in search of emus. The first time they found a mob, they started shooting before the guns were in range. So most of the emus got away. The second time, they waited until the emus were closer. But then the gun jammed, so most of the emus got away. And this sort of pattern went on for a while. Well, and this time, of course, I mean, if they didn't have this happen originally, it didn't work originally, the emus are going to go and find the other ones and then tell them that they're being hunted and then you know you you gotta you gotta uh you gotta get done early on okay what do we got redrew this piece of blank three times as close to a truck as it's gonna get it's 11 at night effing sue me i think it's a pretty good truck at one point, they tried getting on the back of a truck first so they could chase down the mob, but the truck wasn't fast enough to catch up, and the ride was wow. so bumpy that they couldn't aim properly, fast. so most of the emus got away. By the time they got a fourth of the way through their ammo, after 2,500 shots, dead? only 300 or so had been killed, which is tiny compared to the 20,000 birds. Wait, you say 2,500 bullets left, or they used 25? So most of the emus got away. By the time they got a fourth of the way through their ammo after 2,500 okay. shots, only 300 or so had been killed, which is tiny compared to the 20,000 birds said to be roaming the outback. So that is pretty bad accuracy. Um, that would get your butt kicked in, uh, in Call of Duty, except in Call of Duty you get shot back. Are the emus going to get guns and shoot back? hundred or so had been killed, which is tiny compared to the 20,000 birds said to be roaming the outback. At this point, they were like, all right, if I have to look at one more of these jimmy-legged big bird wannabes, I'm going to start screaming. So you know what? Fuck it. Let the farmers handle it. Then the farmers were like, hey, jackholes, we're still starving out here. You still haven't given us those subsidies you promised. We had to feed the kids yeah. fucking dingo meat, which, you know, it's a nice change of pace to have the kids eating the dingoes for once, but that's beside the point. Could you dicks keep at least trying to help us? Exactly. Thanks. The guys were like, all right, don't get your bogans in a bundle. We'll keep going if only to prove a point. So they kept going, just finding mobs, thinning them out slightly, rinse and repeat, until finally they only had like 100 bullets left. In total, the unit only had 986 confirmed kills. Some e do, do they, do you eat emus? Do they eat emus? Also, tell my wife I said quiet. <laughs> 
Emus might have also died from their wounds after the fact, but still, a very large portion of the hordes was still alive. So the military was forced... Okay, I, I like that... I don't know if this is true about emus, if there's any emu um, people who study them in, in the comments. I like the human feet that he drew on them, the very, like, human feet looking with the ankle bones. Uh, that would be terrifying if it really looked like that. Just to surrender for real this time. Yes, that's right, kids. They're surrendering. The emus won the war. They won! Of course, their victory didn't last too long, because after the failed operation, the government put out a bounty oh, yeah. on the emus. And Open that worked season. pretty well. Something like 50,000 bounties ended up being cashed out over yeah. six months in 1934. Dude, just get, get, let the rednecks know that just you can go shoot them. It's easy. Just go shoot them. Get some money. Dude, they'll handle it. You're not going to need the military to do it. So the lesson here, kids, is that if you want to commit mass murder, don't crowdfund, crowdsource. Anyway, till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and thank you for watching. Okay. This has got me concerned about future wars against pests. Let's talk about it. Okay, and in so in the epic war of man versus animal, animal one, the emus are the superior species. I mean, the Australians might as well just leave the continent. Just, just you, you leave. You lost. It is the land. It's now emu Australia. All right. Um, yeah, you lost. You, you gotta leave. Put your head in shame. Leave your country. You lost to a big flightless bird. Okay. Maybe if you guys weren't upside down, it would uh, have been easier. But I, I don't think that's an excuse. All right. Another great video from Sam. Um, I love these these little topics. They're, they're so much fun. Um, this is definitely something that Great Emu War I can, I can drop, you know, just about any time. Yeah, um, I think it's probably best to talk about during the Great Depression. Be like, hey, you know, when you're talking about how how countries dealt with the Great Depression, you got like the New Deal in the United States or um, the projects they were doing in Germany, and like those sort of things. And then we'll we'll bring up uh, what Australia was dealing with though at this time was emus, and they lost. All right, guys, the original video link is down below. Make sure that you check that out. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, I have a bunch of other uh, reaction videos and my commentary as a history teacher on other Salmonella videos. Try to link some around here that you can check out. I think you might find some of those and hopefully some other new channels that maybe you aren't aware of that are also awesome. I try to cover the best stuff out here on YouTube. All right, one last plug. If you're into gaming uh, or just live streams, especially in general, but especially gaming live streams, check out my gaming channel. It's Mr. Terry Gaming on YouTube. I do occasionally stream on Twitch as well at Mr. Terry History on Twitch. You can check those out. There's links down below as well, the Discord server and some other fun stuff. All right, with that, we'll see you next time. Bye.